Let me tell you why I'm here now. Meta was supposed to be here. Ah. <laughs> so the They were fired, 10,000 cats, right? And I suspect yeah. that was what was yeah. going on. So we had a really sweet chat with some people, and they said, we, we have to go to a meeting, and I hope it wasn't that meeting. Mm. Okay? So that's the first thing I want to say, why I'm a respondent, whatever a respondent is. It's like some sort of replicant or THX1138 or something like that. Now, this is something I kept on hearing, right? And these are all be the same words, which are participatory ethical governance. I've made no secret of how old I am, but I'm very subversive at 61. So when everybody starts mentioning governance to me and ethics to me, I get very nervous because I am from the generation that fell in love with the internet because I could say whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, without anybody's bloody permission. Because when I was young and I said the wrong things, I got tear gassed. So for me, every single time I hear ethics and little governance, I, I get very, very nervous. So that's the first point I want to make, just to go off with a bit of a kilter with this. I also would share with you a stupid story. I was thinking whether I should share it or not, because it's an old story. I once ran an exercise with my students when I said, we were talking about fake news. And I got this guy called Andrew. He said, um, I want to do fake news. I said, well, what do you want to mean? You want to do fake news? He said, no, no, I'm going to do a blog with fake news. I said, you can't do a blog with fake news. And I, he said, look, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to put up a blog, and I'm going to say, this is a blog for MCS 3953, University of Malta, student unit, whatever. I am going to be producing fake news here. Full stop. He said, is that okay? I said, okay. It's, it's an, I said, but, you know, put it on Medium or whatever it is. So on it went on Medium. So the first time he said, said something like, um, the Maltese sausage is going to be banned. Because <laughs> it's not good for you. Oh, I just look at it. This is quite funny, isn't it? Uh, I think the, I can't try to remember what the second one was that, you know, we've got really bad traffic over here and people are going to get banned and it was the end of it. The third thing he put up was that Tesco's were going to open a superstore in Malta, creating 300 jobs. Now, I hadn't seen this, but my phone started to ring at seven o'clock in the morning from my dean. And she said, what have you been up to? I said, what? She said, well, are you watching what's going on? And apparently what happened was that one of, one of the newspapers picked up on this and said, 300 jobs being produced in Malta. Great success story. Well done. <laughs> and Andrew was on Facebook saying, wow, I just did done a game. It went on beyond that. I was hauled in in front of an ethics board. This should be familiar to you. I don't know if you've ever been to one of these things. And I was told, why am I teaching my kids how to do fake news? And I said, why don't you teach bloody journalists how to check the bloody facts? Mm. So me and journalism always have had this bit of a, you know, interesting thing, because as far as I'm concerned, and I heard this from Ken Cook here, who's the technology editor of The Economist. He said this three years ago, he said it to my students again three years ago. I've been in the business of fake news all my life. He said, because I do stories. Mm. Every single time I come up with a story, it's potentially subjective. So this is where I am right now. Having said that, I like the participatory bit in this because that's what we need to do. And that's why I keep on harping about there is a problem. We can't avoid the fact that there is a, a problem. And how do we fix it is I still think you need education, you need media and technology operating in concert together. I don't think you can just fix this with just one thing. And education for me can be anything. And it can be off a YouTube channel. It can be off reading laws. How many of us ever look at the uh, regulations as to what we share on Instagram? Every single time, you know all these ethics forms you have to fill up? Every single time I set up my students one of these practical things to do, right? Okay, sharing pictures on Instagram. Well, the pictures don't belong to you now. They belong to Instagram. Oops, well, have you read the... You know, so. We're at this very strange moment, and I think the only way we're going to get round it is through a community of practice. So I'm going back to, you know, so how can you get people 
who understand it, to work with the people who I'm told to get it. You know, my favorite comment today was, oh, it's great. You guys, I guess ICE guys organizing this, you've got loads of women here, only one bloke here. They should all be younger now. Wow. Okay, so we're also in this kind of thing. And I, and, and, and I think, as I was trying to explain over lunch, maybe I didn't say it quite well, I, 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 think, I think we need everybody in this one. Whether everybody being the parents who get it, you know, people say, you know, my 15-year-old girl is twerking. Or you have somebody like my son at 20 who says, Dad, you just don't get it. Everybody's doing it. You don't get it. You're the problem. But in any case, in my case, because you've been telling me since I was 12 and I was on Minecraft and I was getting stressed out because I was playing in a forum and I, was, and I told him, what are you doing, Jacob? And he said, I'm trying to get to the next level. I said, well, what is the next level? And I found that he was in a Minecraft forum and he was basically free labor, no, trying to get to the next one. So he's working for somebody, didn't know that. I just think we need everybody. The old Fs, like, you know, like us, and young people who keep on telling me they get it. And sometimes I think they do. And sometimes I, sometimes I think they don't. In the same way, I don't get it sometimes. And I think the other thing which I'm experiencing, teaching anything from 18-year-olds to PhD students, is that this three-year gap between 18 and, and 21, it's like the 21-year-olds are looking at the 18 and saying, God, yeah, it's those guys. Yeah? So it's this generational thing seems to be getting narrower. And I don't know how we're dealing with it at all. So I don't have solutions. And I get nervous with ethics. And I hate ethics forms, for God's sake. You know? And I always say, I always sign anything. Anybody wants to sign anything, I always sign it for my students. But we do have a problem, I think. And I still blame the platforms. I still, I still think until we get to a stage that the platforms admit they are doing mediatization of truths. In other words, they are the media as well as whatever that means. It's going to be challenging. At the same time, journalists have to understand all those people trying to come up with saying, it's very easy, you know? We'll put the same things for regulating journalists on Silicon Valley. I'm saying, are you smoking weed or something? It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't work that way. The business model over here works this way. You need to scrape every single bloody bit of data. And they only have one model. It's the advertising model. If you try and go with that, it's not going to work. So it's complicated. I don't know if we've moved forward from 2019, when you and I were probably mumbling about it. And Athena was there. was a whole bunch of technologists that she was telling them, stop building. You remember that? It's on well, video. yes, because, uh, because there is a point, and I think uh, the first AI, I think, was winner that said, look, uh, if, if it goes beyond the point, you don't have the capacity to intervene, right? And this has happened. Now, uh, I was with Meta uh, in, the, in their Brussels offices, and we're having dinner, and I said, look, here in the main square in Brussels, uh, the architect suicided. He fell off the tower because he made a mistake. And because I doubt that Mark Zuckerberg is going to fall off any tower, before you uh, build the next, build the metaverse, etc., you need to actually think because it's going to be too late to think after the fact, like it has happened with yeah. Facebook, etc., right? So you have this, uh, I, I totally agree with you. I and mean, the other thing is when we get to this metaverse, anybody playing with these headsets? I know you did, and you weren't very impressed, right? You did. Were you impressed? Yeah, I mean, it's probably quite cool. I'd like to have one. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I, 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 it would be nice, this 360. I think, I think we really felt this during COVID, and I found myself in my room teaching 80 people, and all I could see were faces, and, and, and I was one of those people who was telling university, let people go blank on the screen because the people don't want to share their bedrooms. Or they're, or they, or they, you know, they're in, the, you know, they're sharing a bedroom with their sister or whatever it is. And there were some people from my university. No, you know, I want to make sure that everybody's there because I'm there and they can see me and all that. There's all sorts of new problems that we're having to deal with right now. In terms of the metaphors, I was, I was sit on the fence. But being old, I remember Second Life, mm. and I know where that went, and people mucked around with it. But we'll see. I think there is a much more engaging way of doing online blended stuff than Zoom, for sure, would be nice to be able to know 
you know, what anybody is feeding on. But having said that, and that's my last story, okay, in terms of one of the worst mistakes I ever made in my life. I was talking about the attention, attention economy, and again, back to Attic, Edickson's front row. There was a girl in front row, and inevitably, you, you're performing, you know? I mean, all education is stand-up comedy, whether you like it or not, okay? Notice there was a girl who's just fiddling with a... Right? And at some stage, it says something like... Yeah, you know, you know, and there's some people, probably just, you know, some people, you know, there's something more interesting in your screen and whatever it is. At the end of it, she got to, she said, I didn't like what you said. I said, what do you, you, you were with fiddling with your phone a bit. She said, you obviously haven't been briefed. I've got Asperger's. They didn't tell you, your problem. So sometimes what you see is not exactly what it's all about. So I then do pull back from my naturally subversive self and all the ethics stuff. So we, the participatory bit is where I want to be. It's, I think, where you should be. And I think what we're trying to do with this little bit of experiments here, in the other room, and whatever it is we're going to be doing if this thing goes forward beyond.